we're going to be looking at the sixth album from Delane, of course, from Zvol, Holland, Netherlands. I hope I've pronounced all of that white. I don't think I have. Um, a symphonic metal quartet? Quintet. Um, yeah, that was a fucking butchering of an introduction, but yeah. Apocalypse and Chill is what it's called. It's by the Dutch out Dutch band Delane. And to go on to like symphonic metal a little bit, because outside of Rhapsody of Fire, I don't think I've talked too much about symphonic metal. Um, I, I re actually have a soft spot for symphonic metal. Um, excuse me. It is on par, I'd say, with my um, admiration for power metal. It's cheesy. It's easy to listen to. It could be a theatrical and daft way i just find it really entertaining it's really quite fun when they get the orchestrations right like i always feel bad for most genres when you've got like a, you're starting up a band you can always get a pretty good idea without standing without sounding to taste too diy and too bottom of the barrel if that makes sense so like a obviously for Certain genres that works well. Like if you're a startup genre, um, stoner rock band or a startup punk rock band, having the like dirty low production feel to music can work quite um quite well for like prog and post rock and things where like you really need to be careful of your production and your mixing it can be a bit of a struggle to take off more. I feel because you are having to battle against just a general sound. Symphonic metal, I've always feel that's like got that issue as well. So it's very hard to find up and coming symphonic metal. Album, um, bands, you've got to go right to the ones that I've already established and build it on already. Um, despite that, they're like, yeah, I will forever give it a go. It's always good, clean, easy fun. Um, I think everyone, I think everyone has had that phase at least once. Um, usually it starts off by Nightwish, but I also got into Rhapsody Fires, I said before, Epica, uh, Within Temptation. I tried like the low end um, starter band as well, but I could never find one that really clicked. Um, but amongst it all, for some reason, I never went to Delane. Um, it's not a slight against them. I don't think I have an offense against any of the members. I just somehow never listened to them. It was never intentional, but I figured why not now? If not now, then when, basically. Um, and yeah, so here we are. Apocalypse and Chill. In the absolute nicest way possible, which is a great way of starting any review, apart from that Green Day one, I find Apocalypse and Chill quite American. With with all the bands I just mentioned, so Nightwish, Rhapsody, Epico, and Within Temptation, they always had a thing. They always had a big staple to their sound. So Nightwish was always having the classically trained vocalist, so obviously for bulk of it, it was Taya. Then it went to Annette, and now it is... Blo Simmons, I think? I'll have to check that out later. Uh, but yeah, they always had like a big classically trained vocalist to really hit those... Um, it's not Charlotte, is it? If it's Charlotte, I'm going to look like a right dick. Nope, not cool. Moving on. Um, so yeah, they always had like a big classic chain vocals to really um, emphasize the drama, as well as um, their keyboardist, Thomas. Um, he's just a genius when it comes to soundscaping and orchestration. With Epica, they always had those. Um, they always had like a melodic death metal influence in there. It was still very much symphonic metal. You never really call it like symphonic death metal, but. Just like the backing vocals or like the little bits here and there of um, growled vocals just added to the sound a little bit more. Um, Within Temptation, I'd always say was like the experimental one. They experimented a lot with pop. Um, their last album, Hydra, the fucking songs they did with Howard Jones and Exhibit of All People. It's a mad, mad world as Holland apparently. Um, and for Rhapsody of Fire, it was always the really technical neoclassical guitar work. So... With well, that being said, all those bands there have always got something big or a, a big advertisement to why you should listen to them. With Delane, I find I found this a very easy and digestible version of symphonic metal. And the reason why I said it's quite American is you look at a lot of like the big American rock bands or metal bands, 
um, like your Five Finger Death Punch, your Bad Wolves, Shine Down, uh, Blackstone Cherry. In this moment, a lot of them are a lot of people's gateway bands to like the world of heavy metal music. Delane is so much better than all them, trust me. But the idea of this is quite. A lot of them are well. A lot of the um, songs they, they bounce from having like the quite intense um, guitar bits to like more just streamlined rhythm based riffs with like slight orchestration on top. It's not as theatrical as other bands. I'm trying to say this without sounding like a dick. I don't think I'm doing it well at all. But yeah, it's just a lot more um, accessible style of symphonic metal in a similar vein of those um, American like wrestle metal bands that I mentioned before. Um, Delane has a lot more electro pop influences in there, and I think that helps the whole gateway ethos a lot, and the whole like simplified sound um, helps that a lot as well. We had everything, which is the second song in the album. It's a very very poppy song. Um, it's not a slate. It's actually a really really fun song to listen to. Um, Charlotte, fuck. Charlotte Vessel's voice um, suits that kind of music very, very well, or like this whole album as a whole, because she can hit those big, powerful notes um, without being as over the top as a lot of symphonic metal vocalists, a lot of goth even gothic metal vocalists tend to be. Um, like I said, she's still very much not a pushover. There is, on Mass of the Destiny, she, in like the, what part is it? The chorus of the, the chorus of Master of Destiny, the crunch she puts on her voice to really like power through a note, it's hypnotizing how how good it sounds. Like there are always the sounds where if you see like really shit um, music TV like X Factor or some kind of idol program, and they're singing and you know they're a great vocalist, but everyone's like, oh, you're on Simon Cow Simo Simon Cow doesn't like it, and then they hit that really gravelly crunch that adds a bit of balls to the sound, and that's when everyone goes, oh my god, they're great. This is just that all the time, with that extra crunch. It's, do enjoy that bit on um, Master of Destiny. It's fucking insane. To Live Us To Die is probably one of the more, like, devoutly sympho songs, sympho metal songs on the album. It's a freaking great song to listen to. Let's Dance is an absolute jam. It's really, really upbeat and happy, and just, I won't lie, it's kind of weird me liking a song called Let's Dance, but I think my palate's been softened by that Green Day album. Um, and like I said before, there's very guitar work throughout the album. You've got like the really big riffs that show off what um, Timo Sommers can do. And then he also goes down to like a more um, basic kind of guitar, guitar work that gets carried by the orchestration of Martin Westerholt. We'll go with that. Um, the album is bookended by the two heaviest songs. So you've got One Second and Combustion. Combustion in particular, very, very aggressive, very, very um, bounce, groove heavy song. For me, it's a weird call. Um, in practice and saying it out loud, it sounds like a, um, a cool idea to have like either end of the song, either end of the album, big and intense and like in your face. Like One Second is like the only song that's got um, something close to the mellow death kind of vocals that Epic could do. Um, Timo, the guitarist, doing all of the, um, well, co-leading the vocal work on that with Charlotte. And for me, it's a, weird, it's a weird one because it sets up, so going into one second, I thought it was going to be like, um, like a, se a second tier Epica. And then you get the rest of the album, you realise, oh wait, no, it is quite, it's more of um, a poppy, more, like I said, streamlined kind of deal. And then to end with Combustion, again, I'm like, have I just like misheard this entire album? Um, I maybe I'll just like flick him in the mix somewhere. Um, I think when I was going through it, I would have said put Combustion in between To Live As Thine and Let's Dance. I think I slept since I've made this decision. Oh, someone's cut the grass. I wonder what the fuck that was then. Um, yeah, apart from like a weird track listing or like weird track order, I think this was actually a surprisingly fun album. Um, like I said, I've never 
I haven't avoided the lane on purpose. It's just if I was to get Dutch symphonic metal, I probably would have gone to Epic or Within Temptation beforehand. Now I've got three options and I don't know what I'd go with, so that's fun. Thanks, Delane. Um, but yeah, if you've ever like wanted to get into a like a symphonic world of music that has a bit more of a, um, a bark to it, as opposed to like your just I was gonna say like your other symphonic rock bands, but I can't think of any symphonic. If you if you don't like One Republic, but you like the concept, is apparently what I'm going with. Give Delaney a go. It's super poppy. It's super friendly, but that sounds like an insult. It definitely isn't. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's just so much easier and so much more... I keep wanting to say digestible. Why do I want to keep saying digestible? It's music. You don't eat it. It's just it's just accessible. It's more accessible. I think that's more a professional word that I should be using. It's more um, accessible. Um, it's called Apocalypse and Chills by Delane. And yeah, just good, good, clean fun. And otherwise haunting existence. <laughs> 